Hello and welcome to another week of energy and star sign readings. Today, or this week, we're looking at the week of August the 12th to the 18th. Yeah, I wrote that down, you know, because I keep forgetting. The 12th of the 18th, 2019. And um, we have a full moon uh, this week, which means it's actually on hap happens, it, it is so, um, it will, uh, will happen on a Wednesday, which means the energy might shift midweek when we will have to have a look what the overall energy is actually telling us what will happen midweek with that full moon it's called a sturgeon moon and because i work with animal guides the message that i got is that is for basically for everybody to remember no matter what the overall energy is is to remember this sturgeons can live up to 55 years female sturgeons can live up to 150 years what they're saying to you is this no matter what this week brings, and we will know more when we have the energy, uh, overall energy, is you have been around the block numerous times and you will be just fine, right? So don't panic over any, anything and everything. You have been in situations like this before and you will manage, okay? So that's that. Before we look at the overall energy, I just want to say, obviously, as you noticed here, I'm not at home. <laughs> I'm actually at a shop called Heavenly Treasures in Cannock with my dear friend Michelle Williams. And um, she's joining me today. We have done this thing kind of kind of thing before. It's much better fun, much more fun. Um, if anyone, if, if we sort of, um, you know, swap everyone or one person does one star sign and then the next one does the other, so to speak. <clears throat> so let's have a look at the overall energy for the week of August the 12th to the 18th, 2019. Let's see what, what is coming up for all of us. Before we then go into the first star sign of Leo. Here's what we got for the week. That is actually interesting because I just talked about the um, the, the full moon and um, I forgot to mention something that is now that now makes perfect sense because one message of the sturgeon is that when they show up they show up in high numbers. So this week when you feel things get heavy make sure you have friends around you that can help you in, you know, for want of a better word, fight your battles. And this makes sense because now the overall energy for the week is coming in and you have the otter and the god of rain. What that really means is this. The otter is basically the animal that says, I'm holding hands, so I'm not drifting off. Whatever happens to you this week, don't think for a second or a minute, you should go it alone. Reach out to two people even if you say I, I haven't done anybody you know for instance which 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 can happen to people that they're very isolated um, even if you um, ask the question on a social media platform even though they're not the best you might be surprised how much um, valuable information you can get off a platform like this so don't go it alone don't despair you're not alone in this so apparently then therefore um, it might be um, a week, uh, and generally speaking, definitely it's going to be a week where um, I wouldn't say that things will come to a head as stuff and that, you know, uh, you fall out with, with situations and people, but this is certainly a week. We had a couple of weeks earlier here where it was all about reflection. This isn't about reflection. This is about looking at stuff that is painful, that isn't working, and then changing it with the help of other people. Right? And then you have Takamoi, which is the god of rain. It means healing. If you feel it's all too much, you might be right. It might be too much. So the easiest way to heal is to actually let it go. So if you feel like crying a lot, or if you feel like, you know, um, water is your, is your, um, your ally, so to speak, you know, cry as much as you want to. Or even if you don't want to, let it happen. <laughs> you know, have, have lovely baths, put your feet in water. So allow yourself to let that go uh, before you actually act on, on anything, right? Remember, it always sounds much more much harsher than it actually end, uh, ends up to be in that week, right? But because we never quite know, uh, or I never quite know here, what's happening in your life, uh, and the guides give this to me in a sense that makes, um, that tells me it's urgent that you start fighting. And I don't mean fighting in a bad way, but don't take it anymore and have friends with you that help you look at what to fight uh, or, or to alter, for the better word, and then do just that. 
okay? Oh, that was very wordy, but that's just the way it is this week. So now we're going into the very first star sign of the week, August the 12th to the, to the 19th, uh, sorry, the 18th, 2019. We're looking at Leo. Hi, I'm going to use my tarot deck. going to pop out for me. Ah, this is actually quite bizarre because uh, in terms of what uh, Thomas has just said, uh, so this is for Leo, we've got conflict and defeat and we've also got hands of partnership. So what it's saying is that for this week, you're going to feel like running away. There's going to be a lot of situations you're going to be coming up against where you're just going to feel like running away from it all and burying your head in the sand, a bit like an ostrich. What he's saying is this isn't the way forward. The way forward is hands of partnership. And this year is deep-seated roots. So these are people that you intuitively know that you can trust. And he's saying to you, take those hands of partnership, start delegating, start asking for help. And this is what comes in with a peachy life, a nice fruitful tree to say that this is the answer. Don't run away from problems. Talk about them, open yourself up to people you can trust and work together to get the results sorted. Okay, I just want to change the um, the camera here a little bit because we're all in it just half somehow. <laughs> we're, we're there, one second. Let me just put this in the back a little bit. That should work better. There it it does. does. Here we go. <laughs> so, so now we're looking at Virgo. That was just for Leo. Now we're looking at Virgo. I'm drawn, that's interesting, I'm drawn to a deck that I only use to add to other messages that I get because this deck only contains words and then my guides will give me the emotion attached to it. So <coughs> for Virgo, it just means everything, obviously it's all um, spirit led anyway. <coughs> but what they're saying is here they want you to pay attention to whatever is going on here. So we're looking at Virgo, the week August the 12th to the 18th. And here we go. <coughs> so we were talking about earlier that this is a week to actually, um, you know, head on, uh, look at stuff that needs to be changed. But for Virgos, what they're saying to you, you need to take it easier. You have relaxation and eagerness. And what they're saying is if you get upset about stuff, you will not be able to actually um, um, express yourself in the right way it will feel like an attack it will feel like um, negativity it will feel like um, deliberate bickering almost so what they're saying is no matter what life brings to you this week obviously yes have some friends and look at it but what they're saying to you is relax first take a step back before you actually engage with the problem and eagerness means just means that even though they're asking you to step back a little bit eagerness in this case that means that once you identify an issue that needs to be looked at, don't let, let, let this go unanswered, if that makes sense. Look at it from all angles. See what needs to be done to sort this as much as you can this week. Uh, but eagerness basically means that you want it sorted. So if this is a case, for instance, for some of you Virgos out there that say like, wow, you know, um, the answer isn't forthcoming and this can take another three weeks. Well, find a way to tell people it is not good enough to make you wait any longer. Okay, that was Virgo, now we're going into Libra. Okay, for Libra, I'm gonna use my Archangel Michael cards. Let's see if I can anything else. I just um, bought a, uh, a bracelet with Archangel Michael on it. I don't know if you can, if you can see this. Uh, probably not. Anyway, this is what it is. <laughs> I just wanted to show this to you. Right, so we're going into uh, Libra. So for Libra, we've got explore your options and we've got you created the situation and you have the power to change it. So again, this is saying take a step back and look at your options. Don't think you have to do a certain thing a certain way because that's what you've always done. Take a step back, look at what options are out there. But it's saying here, the canvas. This The card depicts a lady painting a canvas. What this is saying is for you, you are the one that's got the paint, you are the one that's got the, the paintbrush to actually change the, the, the painting of your life how you want it. So if there's something in your canvas of life that you're not happy with, explore your options and change it. 
Paint it, change it. So basically, it's just saying, realise and understand the amount of control you've got with your own life and your own destiny. Okay, don't be afraid to make changes. Okay, there was Libra going into Scorpio. Let's just see what we got. I'm drawn to a different deck. It's one of my Animal Guide decks. Oh, and you get an extra Animal Guide. Like I said, I oftentimes, or always actually, uh, only ever um, pick two guides at a time. And then sometimes when a card falls out or falls out, it just wants to be read. So for Scorpios this week, there's more information. The first thing they're saying to you, I'll tell you what you got obviously first. We have the Wolverine, the White Tail Deer and the Red Fox. What they're saying to you is before you do anything this week, don't think you're weak. You have made a lot of progress, right? So if you are in a, in, in a position to actually, or in a situation that needs changing, trust that you're not as weak as you, as you maybe feel about it. That's number one. You have made a lot of progress. Um, and that's a good way uh, to start whatever, I put this in inverted brackets, whatever argument is coming your way, whatever situation that you need to um, address. And this is something that I wanted to say, this is not, you know, just one of those things that is just um, uh, work related. It could also mean that in your relationship that you're in, something needs to be discussed that has been the elephant in the room for one of the word. And now is the time to look at it. So don't think you um, can be intimidated any longer Right? You have made a lot of progress and you know what you're talking about. And remember, if this is difficult, ask someone to help you with this. Then you have the deer, which means the more relaxed you are uh, when you actually um, address it, the better this is. Here's the thing, just like we actually talked about earlier, I don't know if it was a star sign or the O4 energy, um, you have the red fox, which is basically the, uh, the, the idea of the red fox is to let you know you are an old soul, right? And what they're saying is, you will get through this no matter what the outcome of that conversation that needs to be had is. So don't worry. And remember, first and foremost, you have made a lot of progress. You are not weak. Okay? That was Scorpio going into Sagittarius. Well, Sagittarius, we're going to be using the unicorn cards. Nice, nice and magical. <clears throat> So for Sagittarius, it's saying uh, you've got the share card and you've got the love card. And what it's saying is you need to start sharing your thoughts and feelings instead of keeping everything locked up. Again, it's going with, with this, a very similar sort of energy feel to say that there's a lot of bottled up emotions that need to come out, a lot of locked in thoughts that need to come out. But saying when you share, everyone feels happy. So instead of your people close to you trying to second guess why you've suddenly gone quiet or why you, know, why you suddenly don't want to talk to them about things, and then they think it's them, so then they bottle up and they go quiet, and then you think, oh, they don't want to, they don't want to be bothered with me because they've gone distant. And before you know it, you're both leaving each other notes through the house, you know, your, your dinners in the fridge and etc. What they're saying is share your thoughts and feelings, and this is especially essential on matters of love, matters of the heart. It's also about loving and valuing yourself enough to share what's upsetting you, what's what's making you feel low and negative. Because you can't you can't heal it unless you share it, because if it's something you're you're dealing with for far too long, it's been kind of you know biting your lip and, and not releasing it. You need to start letting it go. Okay. Okay, that was Sagittarius, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. Yeah. <laughs> now let's let's go to Capricorn. And like I said, um, we're looking at the week of August the twelfth to the eighteenth, twenty nineteen. Let's see what's coming up for Capricorns. Actually, <clears throat> Capricorns, the way this feels to me is that what, we're, what, what you will be talking about this week or what you will be bringing up this week is actually something that has been um, in existence for quite some time. They're not saying to you it's a brand new problem that needs to be solved right now. This is something that has been stagnant for quite a while. But here's what they're saying to you. If you feel, if I said something to anything, work-wise, love-wise, no matter what the situation is, you know, 
it might backfire or it might cause me some issues. The guides are saying is don't worry about it. We have the coyote and the spider. The idea about the coyote is that he is a scavenger. He knows there's always enough to go around. So what they're saying to you is if you feel that this will cause you um, financial issues, I make this up as a picture. You say something to your boss and he says like, okay, F off. <laughs> That's it. You will survive it. Absolutely survive it. It's not, don't go into fear, if that makes sense. Really, really important. So, or if it is a, a domestic situation, if you felt, you know, after bringing a certain topic up that you might uh, find yourself um, at a stage where you probably have to move or something, what the guides are saying is, you spoke your truth. It has been heard. And we will make sure that you will be fine. Because you have the spider. Really important. The spider is the animal that creates the web of life. And in the web of life that your relations and relationships form, you decide how much space you give to a person and how much space you give to a problem. So this is a bit like the, um, the star sign before where there's a lot of stuff in there that no longer should be there. Hence, it's an older, an older thing. Right? And all they're saying is you will be absolutely fine, absolutely fine because the spider is also the animal of protection. So you speak your truths, you will not be bankrupt afterwards, you will not worry about these things, um, and you will be fine. You know, uh, before anyone sues me when you lose your job, <laughs> just, just saying, right? This is all for entertainment uh, purposes only. <laughs> but I take what the guides say very seriously. And when they give you the coyote and the spider, what they're saying to you is don't live in fear. You will be looked after. Absolutely. Your guides have got you. And because you're creating the web of life, you will be just fine. Okay? So trust this, please. Right? Okay. That was uh, Capricorn going into Aquarius. Okay. Back to your tarot cards. What's your star sign? Aries. Aries. Right. Okay. Oh, lovely. Okay. Lovely positive message here for Aquarius. <coughs> First of all, he's saying you've got balance and you've got victory and success. And what he's saying is that um, it's all about bringing the balance into your life between work and play. If you're working too hard, time to take time out, you know? Just to balance it, just to say, you know what, I haven't been out for six months, I need a night out. It doesn't mean to say you've got to go out on the town and, and get absolutely slaughtered. It's just saying, take time out for you. Take time out to think about where's my life going, putting yourself first. You know, don't be afraid to put yourself first. It doesn't make you a selfish person. Uh, it makes you somebody that's making sure that with you being 100% yourself, you can give 100% to others. Um, like it says, you, you can't offer, um, what's that, how's that saying go? Well, it says you can't offer, um, you can't fill someone else's cup from an empty cup. Yes, you, that's can't, it, yes. Yes, you can't pour from an empty cup. That's it, you can't pour from an empty cup, that's <laughs> it. Um, and you've got victory and success. So what it's saying is once you get that balance in place, once you start taking the time out for yourself, that's where you know you're up on the, on the cliff top blowing your own trumpet. You know, as it say, this is what I needed to blow the cobwebs away. This is what I needed to actually feel that you've achieved something in life. Because you have achieved a lot in life. You just need to sit back and instead of thinking where you haven't got to in life, you need to actually think about where, where you have got to in life. Does that make sense? That's to me. Okay. Um, now we're coming to Pisces, my stars. I always get excited when, when my own stars are coming up. Um, I wanted to say this because I'm, while we're recording here, I can see there's tons of messages uh, coming in here on my screen. Sometimes in the past, uh, when, when someone texted, there was a little sound that this makes. And obviously we're having a microphone plugged in here, so I can't hear it, we can't hear it. Um, so should there be sort of sounds in it that go, doot, 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 right? There's nothing wrong with your, with your, with your computer or, or whatever uh, format you use to watch this, right? This is just me getting tons of messages because uh, like every time, you know, when I'm not busy, nobody texts. Mm -hmm. When you're really busy, everybody texts, right? So we're with, with Pisces. Um, let's see what's coming up for Pisces. And even though um, we are putting it uh, into the screen a lot of times, I just want to mention this again. We, we are um, looking at the week of August the 12th to August the 18th. Right. Ah, 
I like that. <laughs> we have two birds. We have the osprey and the barn owl. And when we have birds, the idea is to say, see things from a higher point of view. Things that need to be solved, need to be solved because they need to be solved. You're exactly where you're supposed to be, even if it feels shit. <laughs> I swear a lot, don't I? But even if you feel crap, right, and you kind of go like, why do I have to do this? Why do I have to go through this and now I have to uh, deal with this and deal with that? It is so that it is solved for good. There's also no karmic debt in the end of all this, right? It just needs to be solved. So don't be afraid. Because you have the osprey and the barn owl, the osprey is the animal that says to you, number one, you're a bird of prey which means you have a lot of strengths even when you feel completely depleted, when you feel completely deflated and you feel like the next thing that comes, I'm just going to die, <laughs> right? You're not. You have a lot of strengths and you have made a lot of progress, which means you already, or we are, because I'm Pisces myself, already healing, even though it might not be detectable by us Pisces, we're already healing. It's all good. But whatever needs to be solved this week, address it. Don't let it linger. Don't let it go, if that makes sense. Whatever that needs to be addressed and expressed, express it, right? So that's number one. Then you have the barn owl, which means once you speak your truth and you talk about things that need to be looked at, um, that's all that is, that is needed. You just need to say it. This is not something that you need to argue about. You express something that needs to be looked at right and if it leads to an argument you don't have to argue you just stated your feelings and your opinion do not engage in pointless and endless arguments really really important and remember this the barn owl is the animal that draws an auditory map so she can hear the the mouse in the undergrowth and she gets the mouse because she can hear it in the undergrowth without getting caught in the undergrowth. So the analogy is, if you speak your truth, right, and because you spoke it, it sounds a bit weird, we will be rewarded, things will get easier, and you will not be caught or caught up in negativity. So don't be afraid, because you have the osprey as the first animal guide for, for you, Pisces, our Pisces. Really, really important, you have made a lot of progress, or we have, we are already healing. And so uh, whatever needs to be solved or looked at this week, just go for it. That was uh, Pisces, now we're going into Aries. Aries, this is mine. <clears throat> we're going to use Archangel Michael. So there's some good news for us Aries, huh? Yeah. Okay, I can totally relate to this. Uh, so Aries, for all us fellow Aries, first of all, God, forgive yourself, you've done nothing wrong. And second, I've got self-respect. Whenever I do um, a reading, I, I always um, cringe when the self-respect card comes out when I'm reading to somebody because I think, oh, it's such a blunt card, but it's very to the point. Uh, first of all, forgive yourself if you've done nothing wrong. So what it's saying is that when you've been dealt shit cards in life, don't take it personally. If something doesn't go right, it doesn't mean to say it's your fault. Stop blaming yourself for everything that goes wrong in your life. You know, if somebody, uh, if, if a man dumps you, you know, it, it's not your fault. They clearly got issues. <laughs> or, or a woman dumps you. Just wanted to say that. It right? works both ways. Okay, so if you get dumped, <laughs> it's, uh, <laughs> it's not your fault. It's not your fault. It's uh, Sometimes people grow on um, branches of a tree and they grow different directions. You know, sometimes you're on different pages. Whichever, um, whichever terminology you want to use. It's just saying, forgive yourself. Stop beating yourself up. Because as Aries, you are your own worst critic. So anything goes wrong, it's always our fault. We think it's our fault. Nobody else blames us. We do it ourselves. We, we don't need enemies. We, we sabotage ourselves constantly. But the self-respect card is in there. And this is really important because when we feel like we've done something wrong, as Aries, we then feel that let's just take something rather than nothing. And this is a really important card to say, have enough self-respect for yourself to accept nothing less than what you deserve. Okay? Good luck. Okay. So that was Aries going into Taurus. I think the plural of Taurus is Tauruses, isn't it? I always struggle with this. Taurians. Is it? Taurians? Is it? Would it be? I don't 
<laughs> I'm, I'm not sure. I was, I was just thought about it. Is it, is it Taurus or Taurians? I don't know. Anyway. An Aries is an Aryan, I think. Is it? Are we? I don't know. I think, oh, yeah. I think I'm an Aryan. I always struggle with this. And, <laughs> and sometimes it's just not, not just because I'm sort of a foreigner. I just uh, I also struggle in German with um, plural. I think that makes more sense to anybody. <laughs> anyway, so where, where are we now? We're with, with Taurus. Let's have a look what's going on with Taurus. <clears throat> <coughs> Oh, okay. <coughs> While part of the theme this week was, uh, and I have to always use this in inverted brackets, to fight, to address, to make sure that situations that aren't working need to be um, addressed strongly so they can be changed and altered. For um, Taurus, you got the eagle and the goat. So what they're saying is, things will come to you, right? So. As far as you are concerned this week, which is probably the first star sign this has happened to this week, just let things go. You are not required to uh, um, go into uh, uh, the, the battleground, so to speak. You just let it go and new opportunities will come to you. And here's another important thing. We have the goat, which is basically an animal that hangs on a cliff on two legs and doesn't fall. That's the idea. It's all about analogy. Um, so what they're saying to you is you let things go and if there are any worries that have to do with finances or um, creating your future, this is the way of the guide saying to you, don't worry, you will be fine. Okay? Really, really important. But your main task this week is to just let it go. There's another, it's not a weird thing, it's just that comes in. Should you have to deal with a Taurus that is about to pass, there's nothing you need to talk about. There's nothing you need to sort, right? Everything has been said. There's nothing to forgive. It is all good. If that makes sense. I'm just, I don't know why the guy's giving this to me. Um, all they're saying is if, if a Taurus around you is passing, let them pass. It is the way of the world, so to speak. And um, so what they're saying to you is don't, don't have, be one of those people that says like, oh, yeah, I should have, could have, would have, if we had more time, don't even go there, right? And I have no idea, sometimes, you know, you get the message uh, from the guides, what they're saying about the animal guides, and then the guides give me other stuff. And that's just something they gave me. And I'm sure, uh, hopefully, <laughs> doesn't apply to all Tauruses or all people that have a, a, a Taurus. And the way it feels to me, it's, it's someone who is a, a close friend, either a family member or someone that you've known a long time. That's how I feel it. And all they're saying is, it is not fixable and not within your power, so let it go. Okay, that was Tauruses, and now we have Gemini and Cancer left, and um, I let Michelle do the last two star signs. Thank you. <coughs> so for Gemini, way back to the unicorns. What we got? My belly keeps rumbling. I thought it was mine. No, it's mine. Yours. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm always hungry. Ah, okay, so for. For Gemini, we've got family culture and we've got best friends. Now, what this card, what these two cards, literally linking in together, are saying, um, family doesn't have to be blood related. Okay, um, you can have a best friend in the whole wide world who you literally tell everything to, trust everything with, and has always been there for you and never let you down. That's your family. So, for any of you Gemini's that are feeling a little bit isolated and lonely at the moment, stop thinking that you haven't got family around you because with a best friend by your side. You really have got something wonderful which is family for yourself okay so this is just a card of saying it's about united fronts and not feeling like you've got nobody not feeling like you're on your own and you're isolated okay we have all got everybody's got someone somewhere that they can go to okay and if you haven't then pop on down to speak to us and we're always here to chat okay but it's a just a card just to remind you you're not isolated okay there's always somebody to listen and that somebody is it's your family, but it's not your blood-related family necessarily, okay? Okay, mm. I'll let you do Cancer. Okay, so for Cancer, we're going to go with Archangel Michael for Cancer. And then always, just to say it again, we're looking at the week of August the 12th, to the 18th, 2019. 
Okay, so for Cancerians, we've got Believe and Trust, and we've got You're on the Right Path. So what this card is all about, making decisions and trusting your own intuition that the decisions you're making are the right ones. Okay, and it's saying to you, you're on the right path. So there is no need to turn around and go back because very often what was wrong in the past isn't going to be fixed. So what they're saying here is just believe and trust in your own intuition that you are taking the right route, you are making the right decisions. Because very often in life, especially with Cancerians, is you make decisions and then you think, oh, I think I made the wrong choice, I need to go back. And then you go back and it doesn't work and then you think, okay, I, I made the wrong decision, I need to leave again. And then you leave and then you're always backpedaling, you're always backtracking. And what they're saying now is the time to stop backtracking and just trusting that you're making the right choices and decisions what's best for you okay okay that's all we have time for thank you so much michelle for, for thank you. doing thank this you. with me and um see you all hopefully next week Bye bye, bye.